and sisters. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. What better place can one be but in the house of the Lord? Passage is already read. I would just want to highlight verses 35 and 36. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? How this thing work? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another Lord's Day. Another opportunity, Lord, to be in your house. We give you thanks. Because many didn't make it today. And so, Lord, as we preach your word, we humble us that the Holy Spirit will take things of God, things of yours, show them to us, that we might be blessed. And those who are not saved will know that they need to be saved. Those who are yours will know that they need to hold on, not to give up. Bless your word even now. In Jesus' name, amen. What would you say is your most valuable possession. Put another way. What would you say would be your most valuable position? Could that be your parents? Or could that be your family, your house, your spouse, if you have any? Would that be your cell? Yeah? Because some people think the cell is so important. Yeah? Or would that be your bank account, if you have any? Or what would you think it is? It is. Again, I ask. What is your most valuable possession? And I'm going to give a little outline. Tell you that your soul is your most valuable possession. And why is it so? Because it is made in the image of God. Hence, priceless. Your soul is eternal. Your soul has a destination. Heaven or hell, you decide. God loves your soul. Jesus died for it. Satan wants it. You have to give account for it. So what are you going to do with it? Give it to Jesus. We are saying that the most valuable position your most important position is your soul. 
Why is it so? One, because it is made in the image of God. So what is your soul? When God made you, me, he made you and me, and he made us body, soul, and spirit. Your body is the house in which you live. Yeah? Your body is what carries you around. Your body connects you to your environment. Yeah? Your, your soul now connects you to you, to yourself. It is the seat of the emotion. Your spirit is what connects you to God. That's why every person worships. Even the atheist, do you know that? He would even say, I, I am an atheist. Thank God. Yeah? So what is this image of God? I'm going to give you four R's to flesh this out. Relationship, rule, religious, and rationality. Let's take the first one, relationship. God made us to relate with one another and with him. And right now, if you're not a Christian, you're not saved, you are out of fellowship with God. And you don't want to be on the wrong side of God on Judgment Day. Because we are out of fellowship with God and with one another, we become sinners. We are all sinners. And sin breaks fellowship with God. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The standard that God has and his glory is Jesus Christ. And God wants us to be like Jesus, but we fall short because of sin. And that results in death and hell, yes? Jesus Christ, God's Son, died in your place to bring back that, to, 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 to mend that, to, to, to mend that fellowship that was broken. You were born in sin, yeah? So we were born separated from God. You and I should be the one to die for our sins. But because Jesus loved us, he took our place, my place, your place, on the cross. He took, he paid the debt he didn't owe. I owe the debt I couldn't pay. He took my place on the cross. Because we are out of fellowship with God, 
it results in us killing one another, stealing from one another, and all them, all them kind of things. Story was told of this fellow. He had a son, and he was at his desk working, working away. So every now and again, his son would come and ask him a question. And he couldn't tolerate the disruption any longer. So he found a picture of a gentleman, of a man, somebody, you know. And he tore it up in pieces, tore it up. And he gave his son, he said, go fix that and put it together like a jigsaw puzzle. Quick, quick time, the guy came back. Daddy, here it is. Father was amazed. He said, you put it together already? Yes, Daddy. Who comes? You see, Daddy, behind that picture is a map of, is a map of the world. Yeah? But the, 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 the behind that map of the world, on the other side of the paper, was a man, a picture of a man. And he put the picture of the man together because that was easier. So the fellow said, Daddy, all I had to do was put the man back together and bops, the world came together. You get the drift? Good. Because man is out of fellowship with God, the world is in a mess. And guess what? The only time that can get fixed is when man come back together to his maker and put his heart right with God. Yeah. The next R is rule. God is the ultimate ruler. And he delegates rule and relationship and responsibility to man. One is either a follower or a leader. Government rules country. Parents rule children. Bosses rule over their workers, teachers rule over their teachers, principal rule over teachers, husbands rule over wives, and so on and so on and so forth. Somebody has to lead. Everybody can't be a leader. As the saying goes in Jamaica, too much rat never dig one whole good. A solid thing set. Rules are made to govern our behavior. Yes? And guess what? God has ten of them. The ten commandments are ten rules. And we won't go into that this morning. The next R is religion, or religious. Man is a religious being. He is social, he is emotional, he is mental, he is spiritual, that's religious. Yes? Etc., etc. And guess what? We spend more attention, we give more attention to the body than to the spirit or to the soul. Yeah? 
Jacob James says, only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Your spirituality is crying out for help. Your soul is crying out for help. Have you ever noticed how people today are not interested in church anymore? They go to the dance hall, they go to parties, and they become party animals. Yes? The gambling den and the bars, they are full of people. Yes? Particularly men. And the house of God is empty. Yes? Church is not an option. It's a part of your spiritual formation. It is a part of the things that God wants you to do. Go to church. I'll come to church. Next are is relation, uh, rationality, rationality. Man is the only creature that can reason. He's the only creature that can think. He's the only creature that build. He build houses, skyscrapers, computers, cars, airplanes, ships. And get what? He's the only one that can read and write and speak, communicate intelligently. He is the only one that can make decisions and make choices. He's the only creature that knows right from wrong. You probably think these days that people don't know right from wrong anymore. Because right is no wrong, and wrong is no right. And the Bible says, Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. You know that God has blessed you with all these things. And you know right from wrong. Because God put it in you. It's a part of the image of God in you. You know when you're doing something wrong, there is a little thing that goes off in you and make you feel uncomfortable. Yes? And something is saying to you, don't do it. But there's a thing that call diminishing return. You know? You keep on doing something and you go down the road and it's nice, you sweet you. You continue until turning back is harder than going forward. So, so going, going into it is easier than turning back. And that is true for temptation. Especially when the boys and the girls have the urge to merge. Yes? The, 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 the urge to go on is stronger than the urge to turn back. Somebody says, the strongest metal will melt under the right temperature. Yes? No. You can make choices. And you can make decisions. Even to go against God. But guess what? When you go against God, 
You're going to pay for it. You'll have your day in court with Judge Jesus. Man is a worshipping being. Learn this. If one is not worshipping God through Jesus Christ, then he is worshipping an image, an idol. Yeah. And that will take me to the next point. Number two, is priceless. Man, you, me, we are priceless. Nothing in all the world can pay for you. Yeah? How much do you think you're worth? Notice what Jesus said. What shall a man give uh, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Watch this now. If you could ever come to the point when you get all the money in the world, yes, just thinking it out loud, and you put that to your bank account, and you would say, soul, take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. I have written pat. My future looks good. Jesus would say, you're a fool. What, 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 what is all that? That can't pay for you. This night, you shall die. And how are you going to get those things? that you may stop you from going to heaven. Yeah? Do you realize what Jesus is saying here? Your worth is more than that. Listen, 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 listen. You, you are so priceless. All the oil money, hello, and all the drug money, hello, and they say that is more than the oil money, yeah? Hmm. And all the diamonds and all the gold and put it together with your little bit where you have in the bank and put it to your bank. Whoa! Looks good all of a sudden. Whoa, 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 whoa. But you have to give government. Tell them where you get it from. Yeah, because it can come across as money laundering. But be that as it may. Wow. I was teaching a Sunday school class one day and I brought up the story about this guy or this girl who a man gave her, say, a hundred, a uh, one million dollar. What they call indecent this exposure. I don't know if you remember the story. Indecent exposure. And one of the students said to me, Uncle Daniel, I don't have to do it for a hundred thousand or a million dollar, you know. I can do it for less than a hundred. Yeah? Right, you know, the <laughs> way things are, I, I could do it for 50. Or even 10. Look to your left, look to your right, and tell that person beside you, you're not cheap. You're not cheap. You're priceless. And nothing will pay for you. Only God. Yeah? Jesus thought so much about you. He thought that you were worth him dying for you. And you'll live so cheap. And cheap substitute 
and things that satisfy you temporarily. And you have to keep on doing it over again, doing it over again. You, you notice these guys with their, with their ganja and their steep it in Red Bull and white rum and grabber and all them monster and them boom. Put it all together and drink it. Lord have mercy. Don't they know they are killing themselves? Poison. Slow poison. And you're going to kill yourself because you don't want Jesus. Thirdly, your soul is eternal. God built eternity in your heart. So when one dies, he or she continues to live. That is not the end. So what you do with Jesus will determine where you go. Life as it is now will one day come to an end. Eternity is waiting on you. And is waiting in the wings. And you are, and you, where are you going when you die? After death comes judgment, the Bible says. It is appointed unto a man who wants to die after this judgment. I don't know if you understand this, brothers and sisters. And this side of life is very short. Yeah? Very short. In comparison to eternity. Eternity is a long, long time. And the biggest part of your life will be living in eternity. And imagine you living without God in eternity, and you're living with Satan. Hello? No, <laughs> you don't want to go there. But the things of this world has blinded your eyes so much so that you, you can't even think about those things. Yeah? You need to give more attention to your soul. Fourthly, your soul has a destiny. Destination hell or heaven is a choice. Yeah? The Bible says, Rejoice, O oh young man, in your youth. Let all your heart cheer you. And I, and I may add, put, have all the women you want to have. Have all the Red Bull you want to have. All the ganja and everything you want to have. Live it up! But, know this for sure, God will bring you into judgment! Yeah? God will bring into judgment because you, you're not an animal. God loves you. That's my fifth thing. God loves you. Whether you love him or not. God loves you before you were born. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son and those who have believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But you don't love God. And that's what irks God. And God not going to force you to accept him. You see? It does not matter what you have done. It doesn't matter. God still loves you. Yeah? His love was written in blood. Yes? Seventhly, Jesus died for you. He was wounded for your transgressions, my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. Chastisement for my peace was put upon him, and with his stripes I am healed. Yes? Jesus loves you so much. He took your place, my place. In other words, when Jesus was on the cross, it should have been us. It should have been you. It should have been me. But he loves me so much. He took my place on the cross. 
He bled and died. In your place, in my place. But watch this now. Satan wants it. Satan wants you. And he will do anything. Even church people. To get you. Yes? He will do anything to get you. But he, he, he doesn't love you. He just want you to go hell with him. Right? But he will do anything. Listen, listen, listen. Satan's a master trickster. God calls, Jesus called him the father of lies. He will try to keep you away from God. And you, 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 he will tell you that a pure hypocrite, a pure hypocrite go church. All right, that, that might be true. But you coming in, one will make it worse. One more won't make it worse. Yeah. You said, but Brother Daniel, I, 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 I tried it already and it didn't work. Hello? I, I walked forward, but it, it didn't work for me. You walked forward? You gave your hand to the pastor, but not to Jesus? Because guess what? Anybody come to Jesus has got to be changed. You say, but I was baptized. It didn't work for me. No. You went down to the water, but you didn't go under the blood. Hello? Hello? Any man come to Jesus is a new creation. The old is past, and the new has come. You have to give account for it. Yes? Listen, 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 listen. As I said earlier on, at the end of this life, eternity is awaiting you. Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. Listen, listen, listen. Somebody says that, you know, Uncle Daniel, I, 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 I see a whole lot of sinners out there. Why doesn't God do something about them? You know, there's a, a barber who, he was a past, no, the, the, the guy he was, he was trimming was a pastor. The barber said to the pastor, Pastor, tell me this. Why are there so many wickedness in the world? Can God fix that? Pastor stopped, thought for a while and he said, he looked outside and saw a raster man passing by. He said, okay, why don't you trim that guy here? I'll fix him up. The barber said, well, you fool. He not come to me. So well, there you go. You not come to Jesus. So how do you, you get saved? If the doctor write up the prescription and give you and you don't fill it and take it, you ain't going to get better. The only prescription for sin is the blood of Jesus. And you're not going to take it. Because Satan knows why you take it. But guess what? You will have to give a God account. You have to give God account one day. When you stand before God on judgment day, you know, and that will happen. Yeah? Judgment is coming. You can't tell God, say, God, it was Uncle Daniel, you know, that stopped me. I never like him talk to me one day. Guess what? Don't follow bad examples. Jesus is the one who you have to follow. I ain't going to find any fault with Jesus. You find fault with me or any Christian, but I ain't going to find any fault with Jesus. Yeah? So, when you're coming to Jesus, you're not coming to join church because anything join up, pop off. 
So you come to Jesus to have your sins forgiven. Brothers and sisters, sinner friend, Jesus is coming soon. Now what are you going to do with him? What are you going to do with your soul? Give it to Jesus. Right now, you are here. And you are not saved. Satan is trying to block you. But guess what? Judgment day, you stand before God. The question will be, what did you do with Jesus Christ? What are you going to answer? What will your answer be? You are here and you are not saved? This is another morning. A good morning and not opportunity for you to give Jesus Christ your life. This could be the last time you are hearing this message. And a message like this. Come to Jesus. I would like to give you the opportunity to come to Jesus this morning. Yes? If you are here and you are not saved, don't leave. Don't let anybody fool you. Don't let, anybody, don't let Satan try to block your mind. God loves you. God loves you bad. He went to the, sent his son to the cross to take your sins and to die for you. Give Jesus Christ a chance in your life. Is anybody here like that? Just, just, just step up your hand. Brother Daniel, I, I, I want to accept Jesus Christ, but I have some issues in my life. No, no come with the issues. Jesus will clear it up. Yeah? He might not clear it up immediately, but he will clear it up. What, 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 what is preventing you from coming to Jesus? Ask Jesus to come into your life. If you are here and you are not saved, I want to pray for you. Sip up your hand right where you are. I can't save you. It has to, G to be Jesus to save you. And the Holy Spirit is now pricking your heart and saying to you, give Jesus your life. But you're stubborn, Satan, block. Your eyes, spiritual eyes. You can't, you, you can't even see. You're, you're going to hell and you don't even see it. Your first second in hell, you change your mind. But that'll be too late. Let's pray. Mm, Lord Jesus. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for taking my place on the cross. Thank you for your word. Thank you for enabling grace. Thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Lord, this morning, there is a young man, there's a young woman, not saved, go to church, in church, not saved. Oh God, give this adding grace, we pray. Help! Oh God, we cry out to you. Draw that person, we beg you, and save him or her. In Jesus' name, amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present us faultless before his glorious presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and honor majesty and dominion and power none forevermore everyone just say the truth